Uh, thank each and every one for being here at One Accord Church tonight. And also those of you that are viewing us live, we want to thank you for tuning in on this Wednesday night in um, the third part of um, this breakdown of temptation as we, we just want to basically touch the bases with it. But before we do that, we also want to take our opportunity to invite you to come join us at One Accord Church. We firmly believe in the simplicity of the believing what the Bible says. Uh, understanding it, teaching it, and preaching it, and living it. That's the, that's the way to overcome everything you're going through, and that's the way to live in victory. Do you agree? Amen. And if you agree, we'd love for you to come join us. Amen. Amen. Um, tonight, as we go into temptation again, I just I, I want to start off with the kind of the presentation because a lot of people don't realize that there's two types of temptation, and we need to understand this in beginning it is essential that a distinction be drawn between immediately between two exactly opposite ideas which are embraced within this concept of temptation on the one hand temptation signifies any attempt to entice into evil that's what temptation is on one hand now on the other hand temptation indicates a testing which aims at spiritual good now, unless these two meanings are kept in view, the positive as over against the negative aspect of temptation, confusion will result when you don't know how to break down the types of temptation that you're going through and how to look at it and how to use it for what you're going through, right? This was everybody says, right. <laughs> now, we already discussed... Uh, the negative significance of temptation and we understand that and the negative significance is this is, is, is basically this definition, definition that of enticement to commit evil whenever you're tempted to do something and you do it you commit to evil correct temptation in the Bible teaches teaching is traceable to only one person who knows who's behind temptation he being an evil influence that stands opposed to the divine purpose of God, whatever God's will is. Satan is the very total embodiment of evil. That's what his purpose is. Simply put, here's the breakdown. The intelligence and will completely without, empty or destitute of any morality. That's what Satan operates on. His very embodiment is to get people where they just do not care. They have no remorse, no conscience, and, and that's how he attacks and destroys. The reason people become mass murderers and the shootings we hear is because Satan is totally controlling them. Listen, if they don't have no, um, if they don't have no remorse, what does that mean? Hey, in the prisons, no remorse means they don't care. See, we, we, we think that Satan's going to have um, a conscience. Well, he won't, he won't bother us, or he, he, this guy won't do this. You're talking about someone that don't care. And whenever you've got someone that's totally detached, we need to understand as we learn more about temptation that Satan uses this type of temptation to draw you in, but not only to draw you in, but to can completely empower you and control you satan is the ultimate source of all desire and action contrary to the holy love of god satan is designated the tempter and we knew it we spoke about that first of all in in the first part of this but tonight what i want to do is we we've already gone about what the negative parts of temptation is and we just started touching on uh last wednesday the positive significance of temptation. Now, we know that if we give in to temptation, who do we have to blame for it? Nobody but. We can't blame my uncles. We can't blame my mom. We can't blame my daddy. We can't blame nobody but ourselves because the tempter is always going to be tempting. It's up to us to receive it. Okay, now with that being said, the positive significance of temptation is that of testing with the intent of creating spiritual good. Let me say that to you again real slow. The positive 
significance of temptation is that of testing with the intent of creating spiritual good. Do you believe that? Well, the Bible tells us it is proving with a view to approving or improving or occasionally reproving. It's approving, improving, and reproving. And that's thus God is actually testing us or basically using these situations to help us to grow. Thus God who is a holy love can never be the source of evil in any form. God is not the source of evil temptation. Are you with me? God's not going to do something to hurt you. He's not going to say, okay, so-and-so's got a problem. I'm going to make them, I'm going to tempt them to walk away from me. That's not what God does. That's what Satan does. Okay, we understand that's called negative temptation. But the positive temptation, we've got to understand something, that God uses these temptations as a way of teaching us as well. James, and I, and I know that I've gone through some of these scriptures, but I want to share this with you real fast. In James 1.13, he said, Let no man say when he is tempted, okay, I am tempted of God. Because, see, God cannot be tempted with evil. Notice what he said now. Let no man say that he is tempted. I am tempted of God, for God cannot tempt with what? That's that one word there that's so important, evil. Neither tempteth he any man. Okay, so this proves the point now. But he will test you. He will test you with this. Now, how do we see this? Um, for, for those that didn't hear this, in Genesis 22 too. Remember how he tested Abraham? Okay, in Genesis 22 two, he said this. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Jake, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee. Now, is this, was this a test? Okay, how does temptation fit into this test? What was Abraham tempted? Okay, you, you see what I'm saying? So temptation can be used in a positive. He was tempted. He could have been tempted because I mean, it won't be an easy road to get Isaac. The love of his life. What he lived his whole life for. But at that time when God asked him, he, God told him, he said, I'll take thy son. He said, and he said, offer him as a burnt offering. Okay, that meant what? Anybody know what a burnt offering is? <laughs> Set him on fire. But see, now he took this test of being tempted. But what did he do? He didn't allow the temptation to be that of wrong, negative. Because he could have said, no. I ain't going up there. No way am I going to go up there. I've waited all my life to get this kid. I'm not going to go do it. But see what he did through this testing. He, he allowed the temptation to be used for a positive. See, how do I say this to you? Was Jesus tempted? Okay, but he didn't give in to temptation. He used it as a positive. All right. See, did God test Job? What did Job exclaim in, in Job 23.10? He said, but he knoweth the way that I take. Notice what he said. When he hath tried me, what's tried? Tested. He had tried me. He said, I shall come forth as gold. Why? Because he was tempted, but he didn't sin. Jesus was tempted in all ways, but he did not sin. How can you say, I'm tempted, but I didn't sin? Anybody? How can you be tempted and not sin? Don't act on it. Because you see, Jesus was tempted to do everything, but what did he do? He didn't act on it. Okay, how many of us understand when you say you're tempted, but you don't act on it? 
You don't act on it. Okay, anybody been driving today? Anybody seen crazy people on the highway today? Anybody been tempted to tell them what you think? Right? But did you? No, maybe I better not ask that question. But you didn't, I hope. Because why? Because if you had it, you'd have what? Sin. See, Satan uses temptation to go positive. God uses temptation as a testing to see if you'll go positive, not negative. You follow me? Are you still with me? All right. God, does, God, does God still test us? Yes. All right. I, I, I stopped right here, but I want to share this with you. I went in 1 Peter 1, 7. This is where I stopped at. But I want you to listen to what 1 Peter 1, 7 said. That the trial of your faith. Okay. Now, with that word being said, the trial of your faith, what's trial? Testing. Okay, what we know is, is immediately hooked up with testing. Temptation. I mean, why would you have a testing if there weren't a temptation? Because you're tested to see which way you're going to go with the temptation. Are y'all with me? Okay, he said, but the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that, is per that perishes. Okay, the trial of your faith. What's Satan's purpose to put your trial on faith? To, tr to, put, to put your faith on trial. What's his purpose? Anybody know? To get you to walk away from it. To get you not to walk by faith and not by... Sa See, Satan operates on visual flesh. He said, though it be tried with fire. That's what he said. Though it be tried with fire. Okay, tried with fire. What's tried? Testing. And so, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. What we ended this on was basically this. You're going to go through it. And, you, and Satan wants to test your faith. Why does he want to test your faith? The scripture says, without faith, it is what? Impossible to... Okay, so now let's just keep it simple because I'm simple. So the bottom line is this. Satan is tempting you to doubt your faith because he knows if he gets you tempted and you operate in that temptation, then he gets you to walk away without faith. And without faith, he knows you can't please God. And he, his whole purpose is to destroy your faith. Because you can't please God without it. So Satan don't care about you. He don't like you. He don't even unlike you. He just wants you to doubt your faith. Temptation is what he uses as a tool. Now, with that being said, I want to go in. This, this is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verses 12 and 13. Look at this real quick. He said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Not just trials. What kind of trials? Fiery trials which is to try you. As though some strange things happen unto you. He said in 13, But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed... You may be glad also with exceeding joy. What's he saying in Peter? He, he said this in this temptation. He said, when you're tempted, he said, count it all joy. How are you going to do that? Well, first of all, you've got to understand something. You have a choice. Count it all joy. Because he said, and, and also don't act like you've got the... the you know, you're the only one out there going through it. He said, because he said, why? He said, like some strange thing happened unto you. He said, it's common. Because we all go through this. He said, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of whose suffering? Christ's suffering. In other words, Christ did it, so can we. Christ overcame, so can we. Well, no, you can't. 
because he's Jesus. He was born just like you and I. We talked about this. He was a small baby. He grew up. He became what God put him here to be. Guess what? You're God's children. God, God designed you. God created you. God put you here as a little bitty baby just like you did Jesus. He had a design and purpose for you just like he had a design and purpose for Christ. And guess what? Jesus came here to give us an example. And that example was this, that we should be glad and exceeding joy when Christ returns because if we do what Christ did, we won't lose the battle. When we give in to temptation, in the negative end, we have chosen to follow the Satan. I, have, I remind myself of this even today when I had thoughts come up. You know, because anybody ever have your past just keep coming right up Okay, no matter how hard you try to go forward, there's something going to come up or, or some situation that's going to come up or, or in your family where you think back and, I, and, and Satan starts trying to tempt you. See, he tempts you with thoughts. And see, what I said, as I said, well, you know, I know a preacher <laughs> that said that if I listen to you, the tempter, that I'm letting you control me and not Jesus. I want Jesus to control me. Now, people might think you're crazy when you start talking to yourself. Because Satan's not going to come up audibly and says, Hello, Travis. My name is Satan. I want to speak to you about the problem you have. <laughs> no. How's he going to come to you? He's deceptive. He's deceiving. He, 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 he goes into your mind. And he starts planting these thoughts. But see, you, your mind has got to be the gate that, that says, now that doesn't line up with who's in charge. The Bible says if God is not your father, this is cruel. But hey, look, if it'll wake us up, I had to finally get this. Whenever I allowed temptation to lead me negative, I was allowing Satan to be my father. Anybody in this room, in your right frame of mind, want Satan to be your father. No. In fact, that's, that that's makes me mad even thinking about it. Well, good. If it makes you mad, then you'll understand when you're tempted who's doing it. And you have an opportunity to turn it over to a positive. How can you turn it over to a positive? Lord, I give you praise and glory. I'm going, this testing I got right now is not going to go negative. If it goes negative, get up a Repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry I allowed this temptation to take over. I am going to get up and I'm going to fight harder. Some people say you shouldn't never give in to temptation. But if it was that easy, Jesus would have never did what he did. Now we're still talking about this positive temptation. I want you to look at James 1 and 2. Excuse me, James chapter 1 verse 2. He said, my brethren, count it all joy... When you shall fall into diverse temptation. Okay. There he is trying to tell us to count it all joy again. Even James is saying, count it all joy. And does anybody know why they keep telling you to do this? Because see, listen, temptation is there. When we count it all joy, it means it's a testing. Anybody ever went to school? <laughs> Hopefully all of you did. Do you know that you had to pass tests to move to another grade? Right? If you failed your test, what did you fail? A grade. And you had to repeat it until you got it right. Well, that's the way it was when I went to school. And guess what? You couldn't move up to a grade until you got the test right. You passed the test. So... James is telling us, and I'm going to break this down in my simple thinking. He says, count it all joy when you've fallen into diverse temptations. Because why? It's because this. It's, it's a time and it's a chance for you to pass a test to move on up a grade level. Anybody want to move up spiritually? Anybody want to be so spiritually strong that when Satan throws them things that used to knock you down, it's nothing? Well, guess what? You can't get there until you start passing some tests. 
See, I couldn't figure out why in the world I kept falling into temptations. And, and, and it's because I didn't know how to operate. I thought all temptation was bad. You're being tempted, oh, that means Satan's in charge. No, temptation is a testing to either go bad or go good. Do you agree? See, James 1, 12, here's James is again. Listen to this. He said, blessed is the man that endureth, what? For when he is tried, he shall receive what? There you go. That'll wake us all up. Which the Lord hath promised to them that loved him. Now, he said, blessed is the man that endureth. What's endure? Doesn't quit. Doesn't give in. Doesn't let it beat him. Doesn't let him keep him down. He endures until what? He endures because why is he going to endure? It's because the bottom line is for when he has tried. That means that he's not going to give in to it. He's going to start fighting against it. Why is that? Because he wants the crown of life. What's the crown of life? That means eternity in heaven. Is there anything worth not going to heaven over? I certainly hope not. But guess what? Satan's only two is. Temptation. You can't give in to the lust of the flesh if you don't give in to what? You can't give in to the pride of life unless you give in to what? You can't give in to the, the lust of the eyes and do you give in to what? It all encircles one thing. We're all in a battle. Isn't that good to know? I thought I was the only one. That's why I became a preacher. I thought I always had to teach everybody, but I thought I was the one that had all the problems. The Lord left at me and said, no, everybody's got them. But you've got to learn how to fight the battle. You've got to learn about the battle and understand that temptation is not evil unless you do what? Go evil. Go God or go evil? Does that make any sense? Well, good, I'm going to keep rolling then. But now God also, in his tests, even sometimes God's tests are severely, severely and painful. Only for purposes of reproving, improving, or for the purpose of approving. Now, I say this because the Bible tells us about some people that went some pretty tough testing. Anybody feel like you've been testing? Sickness. That's a heck of a test. Okay? Physical, mental, or spiritual testing. Okay? But look what he said in Deuteronomy. I'm going to go in Deuteronomy, by the way, for a few seconds. In Deuteronomy 8, verses 2 and 3, listen to what he said. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God lead thee 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to what? Prove thee to know that what? was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. Can you say testing? Can anybody say 40 years? Okay, that's a lot of testing going on. That was severe. People died in this temptation, in this testing. But verse 3 says, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. But what did he do? And he fed with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee known that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. Why was this testing so important? Because God, it took them 40 years to figure out the test. What was the test? 40 years to figure out what? All they needed was God. 40 years he fed them. Forty years, he's, he said, and he, I love it, if you break this down, he said this, he said, and know that man doth not live by what? But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God let him know, he said, look, I can feed your flesh. Y'all gonna stay in this wilderness till you figure out exactly what the test is about. Him, trust in him. We, they went through a terrible test and, Anybody been tested for 40 years? I hope I get the point real quick. 
I hope it don't take 40 years for me to figure out, okay, I got to do this God's way. But guess who didn't? The children of Israel didn't, did they? Now notice what also he said in Deuteronomy uh, 13, 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, proveth you, tests you, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your souls. The bottom line, the Lord tests us. Because listen, God is a jealous God. He wants your total love. What does that mean? You've got to love him better than anything and everyone. He's got to be number one. And God will test you. I've seen people say, well, I'm never going to come to the church anymore because I've lost someone in my family that I love and, and I'm just not, I just can't come back to the church. Guess what? You failed that test. Because even when we spoke of Abraham, he gave up the love of his life to show that he loved God more. See, whenever you're tempted, you're tempted through situations, God uses it to test you. Just say what a sickness. Well, I've been serving God. I, heck, fire, I've been playing the piano for 50 years, and this is what I get in return for serving God? Heck, I quit. Guess what? The testing was there. But how you do, what you've done with that temptation determined your outcome. Praise him. Draw to him. Say, okay, this is a testing, but let me tell you how this test is going to come out. God's first. I'm trusting in him. That's it. Amen. And then when you do that, then you come out on the positive side of temptation. When people say, I was tempted and I failed, it's because they didn't know they didn't have to fail. See, the reason I kept failing was because I thought temptation meant failure. I didn't realize it was a test. Anybody not like to pass a test? I'm telling you, I do. But I only learned that temptation was not a way to fail, but a way to succeed. Now, with that being said, um, put Judges 2, uh, go to Judges 2 in verse 20. Now, now let us, we are talking about the children of Israel, and this is pretty harsh. But this is just, just to go show you of uh, how God tests us and how sometimes it's severe and very painful. Now notice what he said in Judges 2.20. And the anger of the Lord was what? Can y'all even picture them two combinations together? God and hot. His anger was what? It was hot. That was bad. Now I'm going to tell you, when you got the anger of God and it's hot against you, you're in a world of trouble. Now I'm going to tell you. He said, and he said, because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice. Look what he did. Let me get this back up here. I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hands of Joshua. He let them suffer. Let me tell you something. God will test you. And if you continue not to listen, guess what? Like the children of Israel. How many died in them 40 years walking around in a circle? A whole generation. In fact, God, God wiped out the whole generation because none of them would listen. What did he do? The anger of the Lord was very hot. He said, okay, I, I, I'm not going to save you from your stuff. You all want to go out there and get in it. You want to keep living in that negative, pot, negative uh, temptation. I'm going to let you keep it. Anybody ever been somewhere that you just prayed God would get you out of it? And look, and you're like, Lord, I'll learn this time. I, 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 I did it. I know y'all didn't, but I'm going to tell you. Lord, if you'll get me out of this situation, 
You won't find me here next week. Guess what? Next week I was right back in it. Let's be honest. And guess what God said to me one time? Well, you like it so much? Good, I'm not going to get you out of it this time. Is that giving up on me? No, that's put me to the test. That's put me to the test. Sometimes you've got to go through some hard tests. Sometimes you don't like it. Sometimes, I, I don't know about y'all, it's like, Lord, I'm ready, I'm ready now. But, but I'm not. I believe you need to stay in it a while. I wonder how many children of Israel going around in the wilderness for 40, how many of them said, look, I'm really sick of this. I know he's feeding me. I don't know how I'm getting the food, but I'm really tired of this circle drive here. I'm ready to move out of this community and find somewhere else to go. But guess what? God said no. And my point even in saying that to you is this, is that we got to be very careful because sometimes God will do what it takes to get our attention. I pray for my, some of my family. You know, I pray. I'm scared too because I know the Bible. I said, Lord, I really don't want to do this, but whatever it takes to get them back to you, just do it. Anybody ever done that? It's not fun to surrender when you know what God's capable of. Right? I mean, God can get pretty hot. God can really do some serious stuff. Right? I've seen some situations where, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm actually kind of scared to say, Lord, do what you got to do. Whatever you got to do. But you know what was even scarier? When I said, Lord... Do what you got to do to me. I don't know what you got to do to straighten me out, but you, just, you got my permission. Now, I'm going to tell you something. After I knew what God could do, that was a scary thing to say. But let me tell you what was even scarier. Eternal damnation. When I finally found out what hell was like, I said, well, you do what you got to do. I do not want to end up there. Do you understand Temptation and testing was so important. He said, actually, let me keep my eye on the clock. He said, actually, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty two. 32, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Why, why is God putting us through this test? God don't want none to perish. He even said his word that none should perish, right? Why does God put us through all these testings and, and, and these tests? These trials of temptation is to test you, but most of all, to save you from yourself, from Satan. I've I, I got to share this scripture with you before I, I, I draw this to a close. I want you to listen to this, and we'll stop after this. In Hebrews 12, I want you to begin with me in verse 4. It said, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, Striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou though the chastening of the Lord. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. What son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Now before I go to the next verse, that means this. Point blank, simple. If you're going through temptation, if you're going through testing, guess what? That shows you that God loves you and he's not giving up on you. That shows you that, that he, you're his son. He said, every son whom he receiveth. Anybody a child of God? So whenever you go through something, count it a blessing because why? You can say, daddy's working on me. I'm getting whooped to death right now, but that means my father God's working out something right now. Hey, if you can go through temptation and not have no morality or, or no conscience or, or don't feel beat up until you get it right, you got a problem. You've been cut loose. But whenever you go through stuff and it beats you to death until you get it right, you need to say, thank you, God. Thank you, Father. I, that shows me you love me 
Because I, I, you got me. So next time you go into something, say, Dad's working on me. I know you say, well, don't use Dad. But the Bible says, Abba, Father. It's just the concept. If you do the translation, Abba, Father means Dad. So look, how many of you know you were growing up, if you did wrong, Dad said, I'm going to get you. He, he, it was over with. He didn't tell you twice. But when he got you, did he did it because he hated you? No, he did it because he wanted to correct you. You, you. you with me? So with that being said, I'll finish this scripture and we'll stop. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof, our, whereof all are partakers, then ye are, listen to these words. If you do not have chastisement and you don't have no conscience and you're not going through this, he says, then you are bastards and not sons. He says, you're not even my children. Beat me up, God. You got me? Keep me right. Do whatever you got to do. Don't let go of me because I do not want to be disowned. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which correct us. And we give them what? Reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, which he's talking about God, that we might be partakers of his holiness. In the last scriptures, verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. But grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. When you go through your trials, when you're going through this, God's got a purpose. He might think he's beating you up and he might be singling us out and saying, man, that's a problem, child. You might be thinking you're the worst, but no, what God's doing is he's molding you. And he's fixing all them cracks in your pot. He's redoing it so that he can make you what? Holy. Yeah. So temptation takes on a whole new outlook when you look at it from negative to positive. Because we can survive temptation whenever we do it God's way. Amen. And temptation is nothing but an opportunity to what? Glorify God. Just praise him. I got this temptation come up. Praise the Lord. Lord, I'm going to show you how you want me to handle this. I'm going to handle it your way, not mine. And we're going to stop with that. We're going to close. But just remember this. And, uh, and those of you, I've got just probably about one more lesson on this, and it'll be over. But any of you that want this information that I got, I won't let you know that I will be making copies of it all from start to finish. And if you want a copy of it, just let me know. I'll make sure you get it. But these is all scriptures. Everything I just shared with you is the Word of God. And that's what will set us free. Is temptation supposed to control you? No. You're supposed to control it Amen. through God. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your Word. We thank you, Lord, that you help us understand the concept of temptation. And just like your son Jesus, he was tempted in, in every way, but he never sinned. Lord, help us to change our mindset and realize that we don't have to sin. Satan does not have to win. We don't have to give him the decision. We have to put our faith and trust in you. Tonight, Lord, I pray for everyone in this room. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the word of God that they will grow closer to you more and more every day, but they will also be used by you, Lord, to carry out your purpose and your will in reaching a lost and dying world. But help us to overcome. Help us to be able to walk in victory. Satan cannot control what we don't give him. So help us to wake up and realize that we are children of the Almighty God. And then whenever we go through what we go through, we know you do it because you love us. Show us the way, and always a special prayer tonight for all that are lost, sick, and need for healing of body and soul. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.